Hey everyone, uh, I'm just making this video today because I wanna give you guys a little glimpse into this particular pedal board build. I built a number of pedal boards before. I'm just really excited about some of the, the pedals on here, but as I was kind of putting it together, it looks more complete than it is. It's just because the layout's done and all the Velcro's on and stuff like that, but there's still a lot more to do, a lot of the wiring to do. But as I was in the middle of this project, I thought, why not? bring you guys along and show you just a few little tips and tricks, how to solder some things, how to wire some things, maybe give you a little glimpse into what cable to buy, what plugs to buy, um, you know, some other particulars on how to build a pedal board. Maybe this is a refresher for some of you, maybe it's brand new for, for others, uh, but just uh, maybe it's helpful for some of you. Now, this is gonna be a series of videos, shorter videos where I kind of go over each individual aspect of building a pedal board as we go. So welcome to the journey and I hope this blesses you in some way. So the first thing that I want to do is just kind of show you this pedal board layout and what my thought process was in building this version of this board. Uh, you'll hear some sound examples of it once it's done, but it's not done yet. So in later videos, uh, you'll get to hear it in action. Uh, but this pedal board project started because uh, my former board, uh, I was still trying to land on the modeler uh, that I, I wanted to use. And once the Tonex pedals came out, I knew right away that somehow, some way, I needed to incorporate those in a pedal board. I tried to put, you know, maybe just one Tonex uh, pedal on, but I really wanted the full stereo experience. And so I opted for two Tonex pedals for this pedal board build. Space became an issue. I had to add a riser, and so I got the Goodwood lift uh, up here, and that kind of just made this pedal board kind of explode and, and, and go in different dimensions that I didn't originally plan on. So kind of at the core of this pedal board is the Temple Audio Trio 28. Now, this is an amazing pedal board. I absolutely love the um, the jacks, uh, uh, the, the plates on the sides that you can really customize. And I use the heck out of these things, um, especially on the right hand side. Uh, I, I'm using uh, pretty much everything that you possibly could use on this bad boy. So I've got um, power con here. I've got my input jack. I have uh, XLR out left and right. I've got uh, through left and right. So if I wanted to bypass the uh, direct box and go straight into something else, I can do that. So if I wanted to bypass, say, my, my Tonex pedals and then go into real amps, I could do that through these through outputs. I've got a dry output uh, that is um, connected to the JHS buffered splitter and that happens right away so my guitar signal comes in here goes into that buffered splitter and one of the outputs goes to this um dry out there so if i so i'm going to use that for reamping so if i want to just record my completely dry guitar signal no effects nothing no compressor none of that stuff just straight into the board alongside my uh my finished kind of settings i could do that so that's what that's for these two uh, USB uh, outlets here are basically for all my USB devices. It, uh, it's connected to the PVC6X, it's connected to the HX Stomp, it's connected to both Tonex pedals, and yeah, I think that's, that's all I have going on there. Uh, but there's a little um, USB uh, dongle underneath that connects to one of these, and then the other Tonex pedal uh, connects to its own jack just because you can't have you know the tonex editor can't have both pedals plugged in at the same time but mainly if i plugged into this one this has my pbc and the hx stomp and you know one of my tonex pedals so that's what that is and then i have uh from the rjm uh pbc 6x i've got the expression jack connected to that just in case i wanted to do anything with an expression pedal later on but i don't typically use it um, at this point. So uh, that's that's a little glimpse uh, of that side. The other side um, at, at this time has just another uh, power 
outlet there. So if I, depending on uh, where I'm at on the stage, if I wanted to plug in on the left side or the right side, I could plug into that as well. Um, I have a headphone uh, jack there, and that is connected to my Tonex pedals. Um, just wired straight up out of the headphone jacks, the left to the left side and the right to the right side. And so that's uh, a convenient way to just plug some headphones in if I need it. Um, and then I have kind of this future plan to put MIDI in and MIDI out, uh, but that is uh, kind of in progress still to see if I really need that. And then down here is the Audition uh, kind of pedal, if you will, that I made. It's just a simple send and return with switching jacks and then I'll and auxiliary nine volt power. So if I wanted to just audition a pedal, I could do that on that side. All right, so now let's talk about the effects chain. So like, like I said, uh, I go into the input here and then it uh, goes into the JHS buffer. One side goes to the dry output and then it starts going through uh, all these things. Out of the JHS buffered splitter, it goes into the Kali 76 compressor. Out of that goes to the POG2. Out of the POG2 goes into the PBC6X. And so this is kind of the brains of the whole pedal board. If you're not familiar with RJM or PBC units, this thing is an amazing, amazing unit. It controls the MIDI on all of my MIDI devices. And then it's a looping switcher. And despite the name 6X, it can actually do like, I think 11 mono loops. And before I move on from the uh, PBC6X, I wanted to give a shout out to a company called Pedalnetics. Uh, the, the owner is super cool, and uh, I worked with him on building the first one of these guys for the uh, PBC6X, and so he builds these, uh, you know, 3D printed uh, auxiliary switches, among other things that he does, but he made one for this, and so this is my bank up and bank down switch, and it just connects right here to uh, that, that external switch on the back there. It's super easy, compact, and it saves me some space because otherwise I would have to set up an external switch somewhere else. So shout out to him. If you got having, he makes them for the HX Stomp and lots of other things. So uh, go check them out for sure. And, and so there's a number of these uh, ports on the back that you can split and I'm, and I'm using those or I, I plan to use those to split uh, a stereo uh, output into two single mono outputs. Though, so that allows me to have a few more pedals hooked up to this thing than it appears uh, on the outside. And so uh, let me just walk you through kind of what I'm thinking as far as how I will wire this up. Some of it's wired already, but it goes into the input of here and then in loop uh, one, uh, uh, this is just a mono loop. I'm gonna send that either maybe to the Benson preamp to start, maybe the KTR, maybe the daily driver. Uh, but these guys will all end up just in kind of in the loops here. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to start yet, but I'm still working that out. So send one is gonna go to one of these, send two is gonna go to one of those, send three is gonna go to one of those. Then I believe starting with send four, your uh, it allows, send four is actually a stereo, um, output and then you can split in two ways and so one of those will go to you know either the focus fuzz or the kilt um, maybe that's how I'll split that up um, and then send five is my wet effects so I'm going stereo out of send five right now it's hitting the HX stomp first which I'm planning on using the stomp just for effects so the amps are being covered by the Tone X pedals. I just wanted, I was looking for kind of like a multi-effects utility pedal uh, that could kind of just maybe give me some EQ, some extra reverb, some compression, a boost, maybe some overdrives, just some creative things. Now the HX Stomp isn't necessarily the most, you know, weird and experimental pedal, but uh, I just figured it'd be helpful to have on um, for, you know, some, some other fun stuff to try later on. It also acts as a nice backup just in case something does happen with the Tonex pedals. I can load some amps in here and, uh, and run the amps off of that guy. So it's going to go into the HX stomp first. Then it comes up to the Mobius, the timeline, the big sky, and then back into the return of loop five. So 
I've got uh, that going there. Then loop six is dedicated to the Tone X pedals. So next is the insert loop. And on the PPC6X, the insert loop is stereo, but it's splittable. And so I will split it so I can have two independent loops out of that. One loop will go to uh, the Slotva, and then the other loop will go to a, a couple things. It'll go to this audition uh, switch on, on the left side here to let me audition a pedal. And then it will go into this rehoused Chase Tone secret preamp, uh, which is what I, I kind of use it as an always on um, kind of tone enhancer. And so I put it in this box just to be able to fit it on the board and uh, lift the POG2 up. And uh, I also added some modifications to it. So uh, it has an auxiliary output just in case I wanted to power a pedal from the right side of the board. I have power on the left side of the board as well, but just in case I wanted to throw something on experimental or even maybe like a wireless guitar unit there that's connected to the Strymon Zuma inside as well. And so this is the main volume control. This is the three position toggle control for um, the bright, the dark, and the mid, and then I just, you know, can turn it on and off there if I want, but I plan to leave it on all the time, again, as just a kind of tone enhancer. So again, we're talking about the loops here. So the insert loop goes to the audition, then goes to the secret preamp, uh, then goes to the boost pedal, then goes to the volume pedal, and the volume pedal output will connect to the uh, Sonic Research uh, ST300, which I cannot recommend enough. I, I do not see these tuners on enough pedal boards, uh, especially in this, it, kind of in the praise and worship circle. I, I don't know why, but this is the best tuner on the market, hands down. It is incredibly responsive. Yes, better than the Peterson uh, Strobo Stomp HD, all that stuff. It's, it's the best tuner, hands down. And so can't recommend it enough. Definitely make sure you pick that up. Uh, then one side back in, and again, the other side will connect to the Slotva, which was a gift uh, for my birthday from my praise team. And I really haven't had a chance to use it. So I, I was pretty stoked to be able to fit it somewhere on this board and just use it as a fun experimental pedal. It's a reverb like highly modulated reverb, but it's mono. And so I, I, I'm, ex I'm enjoying uh, just playing with it before my other stereo wet, wet effects and kind of getting the mono weirdness, but then adding some stereo. And so we'll see how that kind of all turns out. Now, again, in the PBC 6 x you may be thinking, well, it's not in the right order. You can switch the order of any of the loops. That's what the X means in the PBC 6 x It's a matrix switcher, so you can reorder any of the loops. You can put the fuzz before the daily driver. You can put the KTR uh, before the preamp and vice versa. Um, if you wanted to, you could run the wet effects, you know, my wet loop, basically the Strifecta and the HX Stomp. I could, I could run that after the Tonex pedals or before the Tonex pedals. You could do that all with the switcher. So I've had this switcher for quite a long time and I absolutely love it. It's small um, and it does so, so much. So let me show you the underside of the board. This is definitely my junk drawer, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I am no Vertex effects. I am no Omelian audio or whatever his name is. I am not a professional uh, by any stretch of the imagination. This is not gonna look super pretty, and I don't care. Uh, the majority of our boards are not gonna look pretty underneath, and it really doesn't matter. The only thing that I really try to do is, I, to, to, as much as I possibly can, my, my main power is down here, and I try to avoid running my, my leads, uh, my, my guitar signal across those, especially if it's parallel. So uh, if you have, you know, your, your guitar wire running right, right alongside your main power, that could introduce some noise. So I try to avoid that. If I do come down, I try to put it away as much as possible, or I try to make it perpendicular. Uh, but sometimes that's unavoidable. But anyway, under the board, uh, I've got to power all this nonsense. I have two Zumas and Ohi 
and a crux and the the crux powers uh, the HX stomp um, and I'm basically full I have one uh, free output uh, that I could use for something else at this point but um, a couple things just want to show you under here is just the stereo uh, canvas that I have I'm using is my direct box and line isolator um, like I mentioned before the um, JHS buffered splitter uh, this little you know cheap Amazon USB dongle there um, I still need to connect my HX stomp to it I need a longer USB cable and then this is a RJM uh, multi-box, and this is handling a lot of my MIDI routing. And so the interesting thing with the PVC6X is that its single uh, its single MIDI jack is both an in and an out. And if you plug that into this, it allows you to kind of use an in and an out in some ways. I'm also trying to experiment. I haven't tested it yet, so maybe you'll you'll join me for this journey. I'm trying as best as I possibly can to be able to plug this pedal board into my computer and get, get Strymon Nixie up on the screen, as well as the PBC6X editor, as well as the HX Stomp editor, all together so I don't really have to bend over and touch much of anything as far as the wet effects go and things like that or the tone x pedals and whatnot and so evidently this box uh allows for that and allows the uh uh the the pvc 6x to essentially be the midi to usb interface and allow uh strime and nixie to to operate so i'm experimenting with that you can reach out and we could chat about that later and you can see if it actually worked uh, maybe that'll be a, a later video uh, but I think that's it for the bottom of the board um, again it's not super pretty but uh, it works and I, I will clean it up uh, after the, the the build is done uh, but right now things are kind of haphazard the truth of the matter is we all like to experiment with different pedals from time to time and a perfectly manicured pedal board with uh, you know, those little zip tie things that are in a perfectly straight line and all the cables are straight. I mean, one, it discourages you from trying new things. And two, it's incredibly difficult to, you know, unsnip all the zip ties, take the thing out and put a new pedal in. And, and so I just think practically for me, yes, I'm a little lazy. I don't want to do all the work to do it. But on the other hand, I also want my cables to be somewhat accessible um, if I if I need to move stuff around and experiment. So what I do is I will do a few of those uh, little, uh, you know, zip tie holders, whatever you call those things, and then I'll put a zip tie around it. And what I'll probably do is use a lot of this, um, this Velcro kind of tape or whatever, and cut it to length and uh, wrap the cables with this Velcro. That makes it really easy to, you know, undo if if you want to get to something later and then just rewrap it you don't have to cut the zip tie and then get a new zip tie and all those things this is reusable and it works well for under the pedal boards so that's a a little tool tip for you as well so one other thing i did um i might may have mentioned earlier i got a goodwood uh lift riser uh their biggest one i think it's 21 inches and that fits obviously all the strymons on top and allows the tonex pedals to go underneath with maybe you know another pedal i think um almost any one of my pedals would fit here uh the ktr would fit under there too so it the, it allows some good space under there um but i was gonna say that the uh the the customization of this riser is really cool because you really can fine tune how tall it is. And I wanted it to be as short as possible because um, the the Temple, you know, Trio 20, 28 or whatever is already kind of tall. Then you add a riser on top of that and then it's, it's getting pretty tall. So I had to order a custom case for it as it is. And so I wanted it to be as short as possible. Anyway, this riser really allowed me to customize it. As you can see, it is, I mean, like within millimeters, uh, super, super close to these Tonex switches, um, but it doesn't hit it. 
and uh, you know it can lift up in the back and it's just clearing uh, these uh, these midi jacks in the back and so it's just really tight tolerances which I appreciate for this particular build um, and I I don't think I'll need live access to these Tonex pedals um, all that's going to be controlled through MIDI anyway, and so I don't need access to these foot switches. I, I need access more to uh, the Strifecta and stuff like that. Again, even with the JHS pedal, uh, the uh, the kilt down here, I control uh, the red remote with one of the function switches in the PVC6X, and so I don't even need, you know, I can, I can do that all with pre-programmed uh, presets and stuff like that. Just a note too on uh, how to hold the riser in place. I was kind of looking around for a while, just thought I'd give you this little tip for a way to secure the riser. And I found this Clevis pen uh, at Home Depot and with a little, you know, locker thing on it. And so it can just go in the side and kind of lock in place just like that. It's a little uh, loose in there. And the bigger size was too big because the Goodwood is metric and this is Imperial. And so if you wanted a, a better fit, you could. But this works great. It doesn't allow the riser to come up at all. It can just be on one side. That's totally fine. It doesn't have to be on both sides. And it looks kind of natural, native to the lift. So if you're looking for a good option to lock it in place, I'd recommend that. So just a little note on the Temple Audio board because... I know kind of in the more professional touring uh, world, these guys don't get a lot of love because they're kind of flimsy, uh, which I, I totally understand. And it's a valid point. Uh, they, they have broken before. I've never broken one, but I've heard of them breaking, you know, the side. The metal is pretty thin. And when you step on it, it does flex. Um, the reason I stuck with it was several. I, I had it already. I love the side jacks. Um, like I said, I, I use them like crazy. Um, and I know there are some pedal board companies that make side jacks, but none that I have found, unless I'm wrong, you can comment and, and let me know, that have this many. Uh, like I said, I use them so much. And on both sides that I just, you know, I love that how modular they are. And I love being able to just pick up the D-panel Neutrik jacks and just slide them in and just customize whatever I want. Um, so that's that's amazing. Um, the other thing is I'm not really stepping on all these things. I'm hitting the volume pedal and I'm hitting this guy. I may hit um, the Slotva and I may hit the stomp and I may hit I may, I'm going to hit the boost. Really everything I'm going to touch with my feet is on this bottom edge right here and so it doesn't flex um, maybe a little bit of flex with the tuner um, I have this on a pillow right now because it's easy to pick up and move by the way uh, but uh, mm -hmm. and so I don't hurt any pedals as I'm moving it around but you get a little bit of flex with the volume pedal but it doesn't bother me here's the deal I'm not a touring musician um, I play at the occasional camp and conference and things like that, and I'm mostly at my church. And I'm the worship pastor here, and I'm I'm here in my office in the studio. The only thing that this does really is go between my office and the stage, uh, just a couple buildings away. And so it's really not that big of a deal for me to have a board that has a little bit more give and that might be a little less uh, sturdy in the long run. I am getting a custom case made by Creation uh, just because of the, the odd dimensions of this and they're gonna uh, provide some foam that you know is cut out here and adds extra padding there. That was an additional cost uh, you know to this whole rig uh, because I added that second tier. Um, but by and large it keeps this thing kind of short this way uh, at the expense of being a little bit taller. It is a little visually loud, <laughs> I'll, I'll admit that, from the stage, especially when you look at just all the crazy wires along the front. But I think, you know, with the benefit of having lots of, you know, overdrives and uh, basically all my kind of dream pedals in one small package, having all the power options routed underneath, I think it's a pretty compact package for what you get. Um, and so I love the temple boards. If you're thinking of picking one up, I recommend it. Maybe if you're a, uh, a touring musician, you know, you're going to fly with it. That was the other thing. I just knew I wasn't going to fly with this. If you know, you're going to fly with it, 
maybe get a sturdier board. Again, Creation makes some great stuff. You might want to check them out. Um, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of other companies out there as well that make good things. So that just about wraps it up for the overview of this pedal board. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment, uh, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't done that yet, and uh, definitely watch the other videos in this series. But I'm pretty responsive if you wanna drop me a comment or uh, just message me directly. Uh, I'd love to answer your questions. And, and chat more about gear. Also encourage you to follow The Tone Shepherd on Instagram. You can also go to my website at thetoneshepherd.com.